Africa, South Africa, and specifically the Kruger to Canyons Biosphere region, also known as K2C, are endowed with breathtaking landscapes, charismatic animals, incredible plants, and beautiful people. The region boasts grasslands, Afromontane forests, and the African bushveld. For centuries, the people of Africa have based their livelihoods around the rich biodiversity of their environment. Water is the precious life-giving artery. All living things adapt to the availability of water in their environment. Whether water is plentiful or scarce, there is life. As long as there is some water. Then there is soil. From harsh rocky outcrops to deep alluvial soils. The many combination of soil types and water availability give rise to a great variety of vegetation types. Bathed in the warm, energizing African sun, the diversity of plant communities in turn provide food and living conditions for a diversity of animal life, including humans with their crops and domesticated animals. The Blader Canyon in the escarpment and the Kruger National Park region of the Lowfeld are linked by the Blader and Olifants rivers flowing towards the Indian Ocean. This region includes panoramic landscapes and large game reserves. These valuable protected areas, although very important, are not the exclusive land use of this region. There is a mosaic of different land uses between the two world-renowned protected area systems, including diverse agricultural, residential and forestry developments. The people of this region are becoming increasingly aware of the importance of biological and agricultural diversity that is managed sustainably on all the land use types. This is why UNESCO designated the K2C region in 2001 as a biosphere. It serves as a model recognized for conservation in conjunction with ecosystem responsible development. International Biodiversity Day, supported by the German Development Corporation, is celebrated all over the world to create public awareness about the importance of biodiversity. And then you can use it actually to start cleaning your teeth. In South Africa, groups consisting of 300 individuals drawn from all walks of life were sent into habitats to record all the plants and animals. In the Kruger to Canyons biosphere, biomonitoring was done on 21 different sites. From the valuable grasslands and their associated seep and sponge wetlands on the escarpment to its transformed land use type with plantations cliffs of the mountains to the savanna in the low felt with its agricultural, communal land and protected areas. There were also monitoring sites along the rivers that connect these different ecosystems from source to low felt. And they're going to be doing an aquatic assessment looking mainly at the aquatic bio biodiversity and semi-aquatic biodiversity. On each site, a mixed group of stakeholders under the guidance of a group of specialists assess the ecological status and learn about these habitats, their importance and their links to the bigger system. They are sensitive to pollution, so if they are present in water, it's normally an indication of good water quality. Development within a biosphere area is, is, is encouraged through the commitment that everyone has for biospheres that land will be used specifically for what it is capable of achieving. In other words, the carrying capacity of an environment will be taken into consideration whatever development that comes about. Biodiversity is basically the basis of life. Uh, we see 
and appreciate the beauty of the Kruger National Park, of the grasslands, of the savannas, of the canyons, the different environments that exist around here at this, the basis of the ecotourism that is, that is taking place here. Human beings are living with and from biodiversity. Evolution has put us in a context of this biodiversity, not of any biodiversity. And there are many interdependencies between mankind and biodiversity, even in agriculture. I mean, just think about pollinators. If they don't have a natural forest next to the, let's say, fruit plantations they are supposed to pollinate, they wouldn't survive because the flowering season of these uh, trees, fruit trees, is very short, so they need next to where they are living an intact forest where you find all the year-round flowers. This sycamore tree that you see behind me, which is Muhuyu in our local language, is the most powerful metaphor for biodiversity in the whole of Africa. You find it everywhere. And do you know that this is the only one specific tree that has got, that is being pollinated by a wasp? See the importance of wasp. If the wasp dies, no pollution, the trees will die. Over the past 10 years, the increasing demand by consumers from the cities for ethically and environmentally sound products is an example of the huge opportunities for African countries based on the sustainable use of their biological diversity. This river is very important because it's used by community. A lot of community in Mozambique are using to agriculture, to drink as a human people, to drink as an animal, domestically, and wildlife is very important to keep them clean. We depend a lot on the resources that our environment uh, produces, which is, among other things, fewer wood. We get the fruits, we got many food products and medicinal plants from this area. Trade in herbal medicines is benched at an estimated 10 billion euro annually and is growing in excess of 10% per annum. Uh, the people from Germany who are making these uh, bionic juice with uh, the natural uh, fruits from the farms, they visited some of our farms where the intention is to, is to see to it that if we might strike a deal with them to supply them with raw material. Biosphere initiatives can only work through partnerships which encourage teamwork so that all role players of different fields can um, achieve their objective. Some of the guys that are selling their properties, especially the white landowners, should form partnership with us as the community and then so that they should go with us for a period of 10 years in order to impart transfer skills, agricultural skills to our community so that after 10 years we will be able to stand on our own. As the Senegalese conservationist Baba Diop once said, he said, I quote, in the end we will conserve what we understand and we will understand only what we are taught. Let us be able to use what we need now and what we do not need to conserve for the future generation.